Thank you all for being with us this evening. My name is Kristen McMahon, and I have the pleasure of serving as the president of the Robert H. Jackson Center. It is truly a pleasure to welcome the International Humanitarian Law Roundtable participants back into the Jackson Center after a couple year hiatus. We've missed you. And for some of you, this may be your first experience here, so thank you for being with us. And for those who are returning, we hope you have noticed the changes and appreciate them, and uh, we are just so excited to have you here. I am looking forward to the conversations over the next couple of days under the theme of standing up to aggression from Nuremberg to Kiev. And before I get to my introduction of our honored guest, this evening would not be possible without the generous support of Joshua and Janice Heinz, LaBella Associates, Blackstone Nay Ultrasonics, and the Whitney R. Harris Lectureship Endowment Fund at the Chautauqua Region Community Foundation, as well as all of you. So thank you. I have the distinct honor to introduce the 2022 recipient of the Joshua H. Heinz Award for Humanitarian Achievement which honors those who demonstrate compassion, vision, and dedication in pursuit of international humanitarian justice. And this year, our recipient is Ambassador Hans Axel Valdemar Carell. Ambassador Carell has had a long and distinguished legal career. He received his law degree from the University of Uppsala in 1962. And from 1962 to 1972, he served first as a law clerk and then as a judge. And in 1972, he joined the Ministry of Justice, where he was engaged in le legislative work concerning real estate, property formation, joint stock companies and incorporated associations, data protection, secrecy, general administrative law, and the relation between the realm and the Church of Sweden, and constitutional law. In 1979, he became a director of the ministry's division for administrative and constitutional law. He was appointed judge of appeal in 1980, and in 1981, he was appointed chief legal officer of the ministry. Then he, was, he, then he served as ambassador and undersecretary for legal and consular affairs in the Swedish Ministry for Foreign Affairs from 1984 to 1994. He joined the United Nations, where he served as Under Secretary General for Legal Affairs and Legal Counsel of the United Nations from March of 1994 to March of 2004. In this capacity, he was head of the Office of Legal Affairs in the United Nations Secretariat and oversaw the establishment of the International Criminal Tribunals for the former Yugoslavia and Rwanda, the Special Court for Sierra Leone, and the Extraordinary Chambers in the Courts of Cambodia for the trial of the senior Khmer Rouge leaders. And David Crane, who unfortunately is not able to be with us this, uh, for this IHLR, once described him as the grandfather of all of the early tribunals. <laughs> Ambassador Carell has been a member of Sweden's delegation to the United Nations General Assembly from 1985 to 1993. And he had several assignments related to the Council of Europe, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, and the Conference on Security and Cooperation in Europe. He was the Secretary General's representative at the 1998 United Nations Conference that adopted the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court. And he was also overseeing the establishment of the International Seabed Authority, the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea, and the Commission on the Limits of the Continental Shelf. Since his retirement from public service in 2004, Ambassador Carell is engaged in many different activities in the legal field as a legal advisor, a lecturer, and a member of different boards. Among others, he is involved in the work of the International Bar Association, and the Hague Institute for the Interna Internationalization of Law. He was a member of the advisory board of the International Center for Ethics, Justice, and Public Life at Brandeis University from 2005 to 2016, 
and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Raoul Wallenberg Institute for Human Rights and Humanitarian Law at Lund University from 2006 to 2012. From 2008 to 2013, he served as legal advisor to the panel of eminent African personalities, chaired by former United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan, engaged in the Kenya National Dialogue and Reconciliation. He is also the, the author of numerous publications, and he holds honorary Doctor of Laws degrees at Stockholm University and Lund University. I'd like to invite Joshua and Janice Heinz and Ambassador Carell to join me here as I conclude with some of Ambassador Carell's own words. These are from a lecture entitled Prospects on the Rule of Law Among Nations at the Vienna International Center in February of 2004. He wrote, in the broader perspective, I would take a positive view of the prospects for the rule of law among nations. Over the years, an enormous body of international law has been developed under the auspices of the United Nations and other bodies. There is hardly any activity in the daily life of the people in the world today that is not in some way or other governed by rules agreed among states. There is also a great preparedness by states to abide by their international commitments. A corresponding strengthening of international judicial structures should also be mentioned. And at the same time, there are many conflicts that cause enormous suffering for so many people in the world. And as always, it is the most vulnerable that suffer the most. An important element to achieve the purpose of saving succeeding generations from the scourge of war is the creation of international law that is also respected. In particular, fundamental human rights come into the picture here. <clears throat> and much remains to be done in this area if we are to succeed in our endeavors to create a better world, a world in which people can live with dignity. Would you please join me in celebrating Ambassador Hans Carell, this year's recipient of the Heinz Humanitarian Thank you so much. I am greatly honored to be here and to receive this award. I can only tell you that if I look back on what I have been involved in in my life, in a sense, so much is coincidence. But at the same time, it's important to use the opportunities you have. And I never forget when I started my legal career 60 years ago to watch the senior judges and the seriousness with which they went about their daily work. That gave me something of a backbone that I have been having with me all my life. And I'm very grateful for this. And also the different functions I had in the different courts taught me many lessons, but it's so much of coincidence. And my only wish when I degreed from the university was to become a judge in my country. I had no idea that I would end up in the United Nations as legal counsel in 1994. When Doug Hammarskjöld, then Secretary General of the United Nations, lost his life in the plane crash at Ndola in 1961. I was a student at Uppsala University. We never forget when that message came to us. And to make a long story short, I was one of the stewards in the cathedral of Uppsala University at Dog Hammarskjöld's funeral. And later, my father gave me his book, 
markings there, American, which I read with great interest. I had no idea that I would end up in the United Nations. But this I did, and I served three years with Bhutas Bhutas Ghali and seven years with Kofi Annan. And when he also retired from the UN, I served with him for five years to support Kenya after the disastrous presidential election in 2007. What I remember in particular is Kofi Annan's idea about the importance of the rule of law. Kofi Annan was not a lawyer, but he understood better than many lawyers how important the rule of law is for international peace and security. But as we heard in the eloquent introduction here, I was involved in the establishment of almost all international criminal tribunals there are. And for me, it was extremely important to see how these tribunals functioned, and in particular, the way in which the prosecutors acted and the judges acted. And when I look into the future, I'm very critical of some countries and some people, how they behave. And I've addressed this in articles about the rule of law and international law and the United Nations, also about the Security Council in particular. And when I look into the future, I must say that what I expect from men and women who are going to govern this world in the future is statesmanship. Statesmen and women who can look to the future and to understand that their responsibility is not primarily me here and now in my own country. They have to look to the horizon and to see to it that the future is important and what we have to think about is not only our generation, but coming generations. So this is why I'm so honored to receive this award. And I had the opportunity of discussing uh, with uh, my friend here, um, um, Joshua Heinz, uh, who is naming this award, about our experience from earlier years. And I must say I'm very grateful that I had the opportunity and the training that brought me here. But I'm also very, very glad to be back here at Chautauqua and to Jamestown. I have very fond memories from here. And I'm looking forward to the days coming here when we are to discuss very important questions that are focusing mainly on the very sad situation we have in Europe when Russia has attacked Ukraine, a flagrant violation of Article 2, Paragraph 4 in the United Nations Charter. And may I end by saying that we should be careful to honor the heritage that the UN Charter is. It was achieved and negotiated by a generation that had experienced two world wars. Two world wars. We should honor that heritage. And thank you again warmly for this award. Thank you.